here with Jacopo Blazzi, coaching Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. Back again with the AC40 after some weeks in Calgary, training and testing with your LQ12. What were the goals for today? So we, yeah, we're back in uh, glamorous Barcelona. Today was really, you can get any better than this, I think, like flat water, uh, pretty solid breeze. And uh, yeah, we're here with AC40 again, as you said, and um, we got a bit of a different crew configuration. Um, so we, we, the guys are getting up to speed uh, with AC40 sailing. They did more LAQ sailing than AC40 lately. And um, we're preparing for Jeddah in, uh, in a few months. So this is, it will be a 10 days training block for the guys. And uh, yeah, today on the water we were definitely practicing a bit of starts and a bit of short laps. It's We've good. seen you are very focused on the starts and some of them are starting on port side. Is it something that you have to, you want to improve? Yeah, for sure. In um, Villanova, our, our first event with AC40, we saw that there was definitely a lot of room for improvement in the start. So we, we're trying to put some hours on that and get, just get better. And what do you think you have to improve from, from Villanova? What would you see in Villanova? On, uh, yeah, uh, as I said, the start is, uh, is surely one of those. And then uh, it's, it's all about getting consistent around the course. With, we don't have a huge amount of hour in the water with this boat. So every, every hour, every minute we go, do out there, it's gold. And you've been training a lot. You look very focused on your LQ12. And we always think you, what you are developing on your LQ12 is for the AC4, AC75. But that's something that you learn from your prototype to apply to the AC40? Yeah, in the, in the end it's the same boat concept, so there's a lot of learnings that you can apply from here to there and from there to here. It's also quite nice to see how the different teams approach the same problem with the AC40 and different solution to the same boat. So we're learning a lot here that we can apply there and a lot there that you know, we apply here, but merely we are trying to develop the 75 for the cup. And let's talk about Jeddah. Which are the conditions you are expecting there? Are they very similar to today? Or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was, was a bit of a comment of today that, I mean, we don't have a lot of experience there, obviously. Nobody ever raced here uh, in Jeddah, but uh, it seems like it's, it's possible to get a solid breeze and uh, quite flat water. So today was probably a very good example. And what, what is your goal for, for Jeddah? I mean, definitely uh, definitely trying to improve uh, everything that is race related. So a process in a racing week and, um, and how do we uh, brief, debrief on the coaching side uh, those days and um, prepare for a racing environment. Because in the end, we don't have a lot of opportunities before uh, the Challenger Section Series itself. Nathan Astridge helming on port, um, that's your regular spot on the Emirates Team New Zealand AC75. Uh, today you're out there course racing, we got out there quite early in the morning around 11 o'clock off the dock. There wasn't a lot of breeze when you got out there, was that a deliberate strategy to try and get some light air sailing in? Yeah, well, we obviously have had a very similar forecast the last three days and we've had two days where we went pretty late in the day um, around the race window. We've breeze fully established you know out there at two to sort of five and we thought rather than doing the same thing again today and seeing the same stuff we'll go earlier and see what it looks like when the wind's building and so uh, that was sort of the, the reason to get out there early and 
think we had it ideal just from the moment we, we got going. So um, yeah, timed it nicely. It's around six, maybe seven knots when we got out there, super flat sea. Um, you had one toe up and then you were in the air for 50 minutes. <laughs> we were pretty impressed with that. Was it on the edge at times? It was definitely light. Um, we probably wouldn't have got the takeoff initially, but yeah, as soon as we came down to like the Olympic port where the wind was a bit stronger, we just tried to sail and keep it on the foil. And yeah, when we did stop, the grinders did remind us how many minutes and seconds we'd been sailing for. But we just thought it was so nice to be back on the bigger sails and sailing in lighter winds. And um, yeah, just kept sailing until someone told us to stop. You started on the J1 and then when the breeze came in later, eight, nine knots, you switched to the straight to the J3. Just tell us about that decision. Yeah, we were just trying to work out if you switch up a code each stop or if you just make a big jump and with the forecast expected to build the way it was, it was probably the most efficient way to skip a sail code and um, yeah, it worked out quite nicely. We were pretty nicely in range on that sail and um, you know, it's always nice to see the sail at the bottom and the top end of the range too. So we got to do a bit of that on the three. I think for the last, um, well, all the time we've been reconning you, when you've been doing practice racing, it's been around a virtual course. Um, yesterday and today you dropped start marks in, which became the Lured Gates um, actual marks. What was the thinking behind that? Oh, it's nice to do it virtually, but it sometimes gets a bit hard when you're trying to line things up in the start and you don't have the visual references as well. So, um, yeah, we were quite keen to put the marks in because the only time we've really used marks up here is when we we're using the autonomous marks for racing. So, uh, you know, our, our onboard support team, we've got a bit of practice to do now because the marks never really lined up in the right spot and we're dragging around a bit. So, got a few days no sailing now. So hopefully they can go out and train and get the marks on the right <laughs> spots for us so that everything lines up when we come back. All right, you're a, you're a hard taskmaster. We don't <laughs> have to reek on that, fortunately. Now, um, it's, it's hard not to believe when we see you throwing the boat around the practice race course that you're not racing against something else. You're not just making this stuff up. What, what are you racing against? Oh, we just try and throw curveballs at ourselves, you know, from either side of the boat where you, you know, as you say, like sailing around on your own, you get pretty, pretty boring after a while. Like we're sort of doing all the testing and development side, but like trying to, you know, simulate tacking on a boat and, you know, leeward side of the boat calling the women's side, you know, we need to tack now or just trying to throw a little bit more at than what you would normally do if you're out there on your own. So the virtual boat's in your head, it's not on a computer screen? No, nah, there's of nothing it? on a computer screen, it's just, it's in our head and sometimes you get comms from the chase boat, like situations change, what are you going to do about this scenario when we try to respond to that? So yeah, if you see us doing some erratic things, it's sort of planned. So uh, yeah. <laughs> just round up the week for us, it's been three days of sailing, you guys are going to have a break now for Sail GP, it's been a good week? It's been a really good week and um, yeah, it's interesting the weather here, how you get some really nice days like we've had the last three days where it's just mint sailing conditions and been really flat water, um, which has been a bit of a surprise when you look at historical data, but it looks like when we're back next week, um, there could be some waves around and hopefully we can, can see what the sea conditions are like when we do get weather systems that you know are starting to come into to autumn to to contend with so yeah a couple more weeks when we get back and um, yeah it's been been good to be up here performance engineer from Alindi Rebel Racing, one of the inventors of the 3D sailing construction concept. Look, you have a big sailing background, but can you tell us what is exactly your day-to-day -day work here in Alindi? 
Well, like you said, you know, performance analysis. So I guess we collect as much data as possible about uh, the day and try to make some sense out of it. That's the difficult part. You had another four-hour selling session with fantastic building wing conditions, plenty of maneuvers, roundups, and different jeep configurations. What was your focus on the water today? Uh, you know, we've been out of the AC-75 sailing and this week is uh, for a while because of the 40s. So this, this week was good to get back into it. The conditions are great. Uh, so we're just, you know, practicing a little bit everything, like you said. Uh, it's, uh, it's just uh, kind of a getting back into the rhythm with the 75. Nice, the, the conditions are, are flat. Uh, we had different wind speeds so far, so it's, you know, it's a good week. Nice. Um, last week they broke a jeep clue. How difficult is to repair it, and is that same still 100% efficient after being broken? Uh, no, not really. But uh, you know, I think we've got uh, this, this, our sailmakers uh, know that job pretty well, so they can always make miracles, and uh, that's what they, they do. Sure, the sails are a little bit beat up by now. You know, they're old sails, and uh, uh, you know things like that happen from time to time. But uh, no, I think they're doing a great job on uh, keeping the inventory uh, up to speed. Are the shapes of the different jeep that you have making a big difference in terms of data? Yeah, you know, it's difficult. Like I said, by, by now they're pretty beat up sales. So, uh, you know, we're more trying to, uh, to, to keep them in shape than really trying to, to extract the, the little, uh, uh, the, the last uh, performance uh, differences between them. So, you know, it's, uh, it's more kind of uh, getting used to picking up the right sail for the right wind conditions more than anything else at this stage. Mel just huntsman on Magic on board side today, a uh, member of the New York Yacht Club American Magic Challenger for the 37th America's Cup. Harry today a day with medium wind conditions, uh, sailing with the J2s. Can you tell us which were the main conclusions of the day? Yeah, I mean, today was an awesome day. It was kind of a typical Barcelona sea breeze that didn't pick up quite as much as we thought it would. and. We are mainly testing our foils against each other on a race course setting with quite a long course. I think we're doing like two mile beat maybe. Comparing performances to other days, we noticed that Magic was much stronger than compared to, to the previous days. Which were the reasons for it? You know, I don't think we're quite sure yet. We'll have to go back and look at the data and see how it all shook out. But obviously there's a conversation between small foils and big foils and how that plays into a race course setting. And when you get into tight tactical situations and you're having to attack and jive a lot and do complex maneuvers, it's not always about who's fastest in a straight line, so. Yeah, it, it seems like uh... When, when you went into racing mode with the marks, with the boundaries, and you had to do many tacks and you had to accelerate immediately after the tacks, overall the performance of Magic uh, was more consistent and better. And differences were a little bit bigger than whenever you were speed testing on a straight line with no marks and no boundaries. Uh, do you agree with that? Yeah, potentially. I mean, it definitely was a quite unstable day wind-wise. It was pretty shifty out there and there's pretty big lulls and big gusts. So, you know, not all of it's in the performance of the boat. It's also about picking the right spots on the race course, even though the boundaries are in place and the course is quite narrow. So, yeah, we'll just have to go back and see 
what the results were. 